Hiring managers go through hundreds of resumes every day, all just for that single position. On average, your resume only has about six seconds to prove to the hiring manager you're worth more of their time. So uh, how can you make your resume stand out? I'm going to give you the tried and tested tip from Google ex-head of HR to turn your resume into a ticket to success. Your work experience is arguably the most important section of your whole resume. So, the way you described it is extremely important. Listing achievements over responsibilities is what helps set you apart from the rest of the candidates. Why? Well, it's simple. Let's say that you're applying for a job as a sales manager. Your job involves doing cold calls, upselling products and services, doing product demos, and so on. Well, the hiring manager reviewing your resume knows all this. They are hiring for the same exact role after all. Meaning, just by listing your responsibilities, you're not really impressing anyone. Let's take a look at an example. The first one doesn't really say anything about you as an employee. But a second example makes you stand out. You manage not only to hit your KPIs, but exceeded them for over five months. Now. The tip that I'm going to talk to you about comes straight from Laszlo Bock and shows you just how to make your achievements pop even more. Bock is a best-selling author of Work Rules and a former Chief Human Resource Officer at Google. This is a guy who really knows how to judge a resume. And what he recommends is this formula. Accomplish X as measured by Y by doing Z. Pretty simple, right? Here's an example in action. Developed company procedures and guidelines for data analysis and security that increased efficiency by 30% in the first six months after implementation. And you might be wondering, what does this actually do? Well, quantifying your achievements gives you credibility and makes your achievements more tangible. It shows the hiring manager the scope of what you've accomplished and it sets you apart from most candidates. If the hiring manager is on the fence between two candidates, let's say, with the same background, the one that can provide concrete data for their achievements has the upper hand. Now, let's break down the formula to make this a little easier. First, you have the results. For example, you increased company sales by 20%. Once you set up the summary of your achievement, you have to give more details. Do that by mentioning the scale of the achievements. In this, increasing the company sales by 20% is a start, but it can be even better. Give the exact numbers. Increase by 20% can mean an increase of 20 from 100. Not very impressive, but it can also mean an increase from 1 million to 1.2 million, which is a lot more impactful. And then finally, we have the time frame of your achievement. We've already established the scale of your 20% sales increase. Specify if you achieve this over several weeks, months, or years. This further helps quantify how impressive your achievements are. If you increase sales by $200,000 in 12 months, that's extremely impressive. But if it took you five years to get to those results though, then that's not as impactful. Now, a common problem job seekers have with this formula is that they don't know what their exact numbers are. Most employees don't keep track of the impact of their work on the organization as a whole. After all, they're busy working, and it's usually the manager's job to keep an eye out for those statistics. Thankfully, there's an easy solution. Just ask your former manager. They probably have some more data available from your time at the company. But moving forward in your career, I recommend you keep a track of your results and achievements. Now that you know how to quantify your achievements, there's only one thing left. Where should you list them? Well, let's start from the top. And that's with your resume summary. Your resume summary is often the first section the hiring manager reads to decide if your resume is worth their time. This short paragraph at the top of your resume should contain the main highlights of your whole resume. It's about two or three sentences and includes your most important skills, experience and achievements. Here are two examples. The first one is experienced project manager with five plus years of work experience seeking a position at company X. Previous experience includes working at company Y, developing software for clients such as client A and client B. The first one isn't really that detailed and doesn't highlight any notable achievements. This one, on the other hand, experienced project manager with five plus years of work experience seeking a position at Pair Computers, managed cross-department teams of 15 plus people, successfully managed the development of several software projects, including project A and project B. Now, this is an impressive resume summary. Next, you should add your achievements to your work experience section. This is where you want to be as detailed as you can. 
Always use bullet points to separate your achievements and list about six achievements from your most recent jobs and four or fewer as you go further back on your resume. Optionally, you can also list achievements in your independent projects and volunteering sections. To add your achievements here, follow the same formatting as the work experience, depending on how much space you have on your resume. And that's a wrap. By now, you should know all you need to know to make your resume a lot more impactful. Now all that's left to do is implement our tip into your resume and land your next dream job. Good luck! Be sure to subscribe for more videos on how to craft the perfect resume and nail your job interview. I've been Andre, thanks for watching. Career Advice by Novo Resume.